All right, let's get this rocking. We're connected to the YouTube. We should be connected to the Twitch. How's everybody doing? We got a lot of binder action to go. It took me an absolute, and I don't even, I don't even know, so much time, so much time to uh, actually organize and uh, sleeve the cards that we're about to put in the binder. Uh, I think Scarlet and Violet, just in general, there was like this weird clumping, so it was a, it was a battle to actually just pull out one of each card. Even uh, like the hollows and stuff like that, it was like I hit a bunch of them in a row. Because I put the cards in, in the uh, BCW box in order. That was uh, that was a battle today. Tap Miggy, how you doing? Looks like we're we're up we're up and running on the Twitch. We're up and running on the YouTube. Stream Elements is present. Christian it says opened two Scarlet and Violet boxes and both had a gold Coridon. At least one had Miriam Alt as well. That's uh, that's some pretty good uh, some good luck. That's a good box. The gold card on the gold cards are pretty nice. They're not that expensive, but I mean, that's that's decent. Probably not as expensive as the Miraidon, but because he's not playable, at least not at this time. Me, I don't know. I can't even remember what the Coridon does exactly. Whether or not it like has potential down the road, but uh, but yeah. Dime card, how's it going, Piggy John? Nah, I love you too. Chris says, uh, "Did you hit up a Guinness Book of World Records for that speed run?" Um, I have not, uh, but uh, I would imagine that uh, that is—I don't think that's ever going to be broken. That record. Uh, apparently, someone was telling me that uh, Danny Phantom opened two. 2000 packs or something like that and didn't complete the set. He was still missing the uh, the full art Gyarados um, And then somebody else had opened a thousand packs and finished it I think So I mean you, you got to get lucky either way All right We got the uh, binder action the binder cam. I might need to move and or shrink myself down a little bit so that we can see the full thing in action. Whew, I am uh, I'm excited to fill this bad boy out. Castle Strong says, "Where'd you get that binder, homie?" Uh, if you look in the in the description, there should be a link uh, for the uh, the binder. It might be a link to the the nine pocket one, uh, but it's Dex protection. Uh, I don't know if I also have uh, might also have a link to the uh, the um, the Ultra Pro ones. If I had to choose one or the other, I'd probably go with the Ultra Pro. Um, but these are a pretty good option. Yeah, they make a bunch of like deck boxes and stuff like that. All kinds of accessories. Uh, but also this like the side loading binders. Alright. Let's grab a I'm gonna grab a chunk of cards. Have them all. Nicely stationed here so I can so I can grab at them as we go. And we'll fill out the entire binder and then we can get back to I think we were on I think we were on Ultra Prism. So we'll get back to Ultra Prism. Um, work on that. Once we're once we're finished. See if I can I gotta station myself properly here. I was like in pain by the end of that stream. Um, just the way that I open cards under the camera is not exactly the most ergonomic and my old my old man bod was was definitely aching so next uh next six hour stream i'm gonna have to uh sit sit better maybe all right we gotta start off with the panko i guess the the most exciting part of this binder uh is gonna be towards the back uh once we get into I was really glad also that uh, I had all the reverses. It was a little bit of a gamble. Thank you, Blasty, for the subscription. We got the uh, the Twitch affiliate now, too, for anyone that's wondering. Pretty sweet. I turned the ads down to uh, whatever the, the minimum option was. 
I think they still run like pre-roll or whatever, but uh you have to you have to bear with me, guys. I hear there's a there's a lot of people hating on the Scarlet and Violet, but I don't know. What do you guys think? You like it? I like it. All right, we got Compton with the sub. Guys, don't feel like you need to subscribe. Um, thank you if you do, uh, especially if you have if you have Amazon, then you get a free uh, subscription on Twitch. Uh, if you can toss that at me once a month and you're not using it elsewhere, then it's much appreciated, but definitely no need to do so. For anyone that's not familiar with the, uh, the Twitch platform and has Amazon Prime for other reasons, this, the, the start of this binder is going to look beautiful. I kind of hate the fact uh, that we're going to have this nice, like, regular reverse, regular reverse. Uh, and then as soon as we get an EX card, it's going to mess it all up. Blasty says that the, his primes go to e-girls. Sorry. It's not very nice. But I understand. This is, uh, I forget the exact number of cards in the set, but I'm sure there'll be more, um, like, variants that can end up being printed. Usually the base set ends up filled with them. If you look at, like, Sword and Shield base, Sun and Moon base, uh, they love to, to reprint the cards that are in the set with a different foil, etc. So I'm expecting lots of those. Carrot Love, got the Founder Badge Gang. Sick Nasty. Yeah, I gotta. I'm gonna have to add the uh, some emotes. I think the I think the the emotes need an overhaul on the on the whole. We'll we'll do something there. Also need to get uh, some more juicy commands for the old stream elements bot. I thought. Uh, I thought I lost one of my reverses, but uh, it was ended, it ended up being in the box. So I resleeved another copy of that card, and then I found it afterwards. I know, exciting stuff. The life of the the binder collection. Never cold says yo rattle. I gotta go to work, but congrats on the crazy accomplishment. Yeah, I think it, yeah, it was never cold. That I think it was never cold. Have fun at work, um, or at least you know, have a good time. Try to enjoy yourself. I think it was uh, I think it was never cold that mentioned about uh, Danny Phantom opening two thousand packs and and not getting one of the cards. I mean that's gonna that can definitely happen. I don't know how to word that in a good way. Like I don't know. I guess I don't know whether you like your job or not. If you don't like your job, hopefully it's not that bad. If you do like your job, hopefully it's extra good. That's how we'll put it. Great. Thank you very much for the, the 100 bits. Uh, unfortunately, there's no good way for me to, to sync um, the the uh, text-to-speech. Uh, so the only way to, to do the text-to-speech thing would be like the stream elements link down down below. Either the YouTube or the, uh, the Twitch. Just so it's not overlapping. Poke Girl Lauren is here to hate on the the piggies. I see you keep pulling them for some reason now. I think it was meant to be. Andy says, "We're all the hits from the right side." Heard that's one hundred percent confirmed and not a lie at all or anything. Um, I don't know. Is that like a meme now? Is that whatever? Is did someone did someone say that and they were just being ridiculous? There's uh there was I think there was a few boxes that we hit like big stuff early and I always go from the left side first. There was a top, there was a couple times that we got like a gold card in the first pack. Some YouTuber faked it and got called out. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't know. The, the... Oh, it was a it was a lie from the guy that pretends to be Poker Rev. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Anything for attention, right? At least, at least that was his own content, uh, rather than just, 
you know, putting his face over top of somebody else's or saying something at the end of somebody's entire video in an Instagram short or what do you want to call it? Instagram reel. They do like to do that. All right, our first EX, and uh, this is where the binder gets sloppy. Um, I kind of almost debated putting the EXs like afterwards. Uh, but I, I don't like the fact that it wouldn't be in numerical order. It's like a double-edged sword. Uh, for, <laughs> forehead and chat says, what's a rev? Uh, it's uh, it's a it's an alcoholic beverage. Uh, it's blue in color. I don't know if that is rev like a Canada thing. The, like the alcoholic drink. No, I was uh, referring to Poker Rev. We have a. Uh, he has an impersonator. Oh, yeah, the Dolliv. Can you imagine if we were only missing that Dolliv special art? I can't remember the names of the. Uh, the cards. So is it like an illust illustration rare? Uh, is like the we had special illustration rares, which are like alt arts, and then we have like the illustration rares. I'll get it eventually. Don't worry. And I gotta switch my mindset of like secret rare for the gold cards. It's hyper rare now, guys. Hyper rare for gold. Now that we don't have rainbow cards. John, how's it going? Welcome to the chat. Welcome to the um, rattle. Takes time to put all his cards away. Um, is that we should we change the title to that? Chrissy on uh, Twitch says I messaged Possum Bud about him today, asking about stuff. He randomly started sharing my clips and vids, and as much as it's cool to have someone share it. I wish it wasn't him. But you had uh, pretend poker rev, sharing your stuff, Share sharing, not stealing your content. Yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of that. Like the uh, the the stolen stuff that that uh, dad was opening with their kid, and then they're like they're just kind of like talking over the entire video, uh, and claiming that they're like helping them out when they're really just kind of ripping ripping the content essentially. But uh, I guess that's that's what you do when you can't uh, you can't come up with your own stuff, your own thing. You just you just talk over someone else's. I get I get if there's something like important that you really want to add some commentary on, but if you're just like watching somebody else's opening with your face on the bottom of the screen, I don't know if I don't know if I call that uh, real content creation. Jedi Master Josh, world record set completion. Yeah, I don't think anyone's beaten that. And the, the amount of money that it would take to to try it. I saw a lot of people comment that like, oh yeah, Rev's going to beat it. Like, even if he spends the money to open that, which would be very easy to do. Um, just the odds of him getting, getting that set completion in less than 581 packs is like pretty impossible. <laughs> Ryan says he would do well on Twitch. Just sitting there with a video on. Yeah, man, that was, uh, I don't know if it's less of a thing now. Where people were getting in trouble just kind of sitting there watching watching TV. But, uh, yeah, there's a, lot, there's a lot of that. There's some of it that is transformed enough that it, you know, it makes sense. Other times it's just, it's just straight up taking something else. Publishing it. Pokekid96 says, what's up, Rattle? Binder looking good. Uh, yeah, it is. It's looking looking mighty swell. I have some more binders on the way. I really need to get all my modern sets um, slapped into binders. I, I ran out of uh, the, the four-slot ones, and there's a lot of the new sets that kind of require it. So, But uh, it's pretty awesome. I, I do like coming on here, putting stuff away in the binders, reading what chat has to say. You guys have 
fun, interesting questions and or jokes. They're always appreciated. We got Alice in the chat. How's it going, Alice? Ryan says, I assume you're much happier with Scarlet and Violet pull rates. I, I think I think they needed to bring it back down to earth a little bit. It was getting it was getting pretty out of hand. I mean, as we'll see, tomorrow we'll try to open another um, Moonbrion, trying to open our first Moonbrion. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's too hard, too hard. Timo says people are saying Scarlet and Violet is too easy to pull. Is it? I would say I would argue that most people are not opening enough packs to like. What? It should be achievable when you open three cases to complete a set. Not saying that it, like clearly it doesn't necessarily happen, but the fact that it can happen I think is a is a step in the right direction. Kind of bringing us back to like sun and moon. I guess sun and, probably similar to like a sun and moon difficulty maybe. Uh, Torsten says, did they announce an Evolving Skies reprint? I, not that I know of. Um, and the, I don't I don't think they necessarily need an Evolving Skies reprint. Uh, the booster boxes are a little out of hand, but I mean, for anyone that's opening, you, you don't really, you don't need booster boxes. It's better to just get the packs and other products anyway. Um, but that's kind of the way that they've been working. Like it's uh, there's been like booster boxes at the start, and then the booster boxes are gone. Uh, now they have like booster bundles and stuff like that. So I don't know. There's there's lots of um, there's lots of evolving skies in in other products currently. So I don't think it, it necessarily needs it. Whether or not they care to to bring down the price of the booster box is a different different story. If, I mean, if they wanted to, they could keep. Clearly, they, they put some up on the Pokemon Center and it disappears, so... Surely they're aware of the fact that they could uh, and would like likely make a lot of money. Um, would it, uh, it would probably upset a lot of people that are sitting on a lot of boxes, but... I mean, that's kind of the risk you, the risk you take um, when, when you buy modern product. Typically, it's not going to jump up in price the way that that did, so... Chris says, 10 booster boxes deep and really only a small handful of reverse hollows and full arts left. I agree, we're pretty much going into a junk era Pokemon if there's overprinting mixed with little rarity. I mean, that, that, what's, what is overprinting? If it's if it's selling out, it's not overprinted, right? If it gets to the point that they, they can't even sell it in stores, they like distributors are stuck with a bunch of it, then yeah, that's overprinting. But if the, all the product is getting opened or purchased, um, it's not really overprinting, in my opinion. And again, like, we can, all you have to do is go back to, like, we'll go back to Sun and Moon prior, prior to the, the boom. Uh, and usually there weren't cards over $100 on release. People are just not used to that. Like, th there shouldn't be a card that is $600 when there's product available on the shelf. It's just, that's too much chase, too hard to chase. Wes, how's it going? We got dope poker snipes this year. Repo Man360 on Twitch says this set looks amazing. Um, I would agree. There's a lot of really sick artwork. Uh, it's pretty cool to see all the new Pokemon. I mean, there's a mix of new and old Pokemon, uh, but a, a good chunk of the new ones in there, uh, which is always always fun. So this is kind of neat how we're back into the uh, like the nice organization here since we had another EX to, to shift the cards back the way they, they need to be. Yeah, the reverses are definitely sweet and nasty. Uh, says Josh. I was, I was kind of hoping they'd do something a little bit different. It'd be cool if they went back to like something uh, similar to like the EX era. Or did something like really, really wild, but yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice switch up. I don't know if we'll get sick of it as we, uh, as we have the same thing in, in all the sets, or if it would be kind of cool if they, if they changed this design in each set. I know that would require extra work on their part, but 
I think it would be be worth it. Chris says the art is so amazing too. The AR cards all pop. Money's the weird grid line. Oh, minus the uh, weird, weird grid line issues. Yeah, I had some of those where they had like they weren't necessarily like grids, but I had some like up down lines. Some I guess vertical rather. Rather. Alex says, "Careful, rattle! All the singles on the left side of the binder are light weighted." Guys, guys. Go easy on pretend poker rep. It's not his fault that <laughs> I I mostly just want to know if he does he make stuff like that up on purpose to get attention because it I mean it works whether or not is he playing dumb or is he just dumb? Can anyone tell me that? Can we get an IQ test or something so we can find out for sure? Did he open one box and thought that? Yeah, it's like every time any product comes out, people are like, it's weighable. And then you find out it's not really weighable. And at the same time, I just, yeah. guys, you should never have to worry about whether packs are weighed or not because you shouldn't buy them from anywhere that they could potentially be weighed. If you're buying them from the Pokajou, stop. Especially if it's vintage. And if you bought them from Cool Trainer Ryan. I'm going to, we'll quote Cool Trainer Ryan on that. Source, Cool Trainer Ryan. Uh, Timo Main says, are you saying don't buy loose packs? I'm, I'm not saying don't buy loose packs. I mean, if you're going to a reputable game store, if you're going, if you're buying them from somebody uh, that has no reason to to do that, which is most people, if you if you if you just go on over to psapikachu.com, uh, or if you can just buy a buy a sealed product. I mean, you might as might as well buy a booster box, pre-order a booster box. I think he sold out of. Uh, he had a little bit of, of leftover uh, Scarlet Violet, but uh, I think it's all sold out now. He had some extra booster boxes and some. I mean, you can check. Timo Main says never heard of that site. It is where I get the majority of my cards. Uh, it's where the three cases uh, came from for my my opening. Uh, there's no there's no discount codes or anything. He just puts the best price that he possibly can on there for everyone. Uh, and if uh, in terms of like pre-orders, it's a great spot to do so. Um, largely due to the fact that uh, he actually has his allocation numbers before he takes pre-orders, so you know that your actual box is you know allocated to you or going to be held for you. Um, less of an issue now, but it wouldn't surprise me if something something weird happens. Alex says, "I remember buying vintage sealed heavy packs from Rusty back in the back in 2019. Ex Deoxys for 400. Yeah, so if you're gonna buy sealed stuff, Rusty is also a you know a good option. If if it's uh, if it's vintage stuff, uh, especially, that's kind of where you gotta worry about it more. Um, unless you're unless you're buying it from." Uh, what not dogger 69 um, <laughs> you shouldn't have to worry about any any bad things going on with modern packs no one that has any sort of reputation is going to ruin their reputation over um, mapping out or weighing or resealing modern booster packs that are very inexpensive I guess in in, in comparison to the uh, the vintage stuff at least we got our wiglets the wiglets in the chat. Maybe we need we need we need wiglet emotes. Animated ones. Just wiggling. Alex Hodges super chatted ten dollars. What not dogger sixty nine craves the moon viewing ceremony bounty game. Oh, the, the bounty, the bounty games. Oh, don't get me started on bounty games. The worst part is like <laughs> the whatnot dogger 69s will also say that they're like good people because they give you a bounty 
uh, which is encouraging you to buy overpriced packs to at a chance of, of getting a ridiculous bounty that's either rigged or so difficult to achieve that it uh, it doesn't make any sense. It's it's baked in, guys. It's it's carnival games. What not is a carnival? Believe it or not. Thank you, Alex, for the ten. We're gonna get that Moonbury on tomorrow. Dime card. Thank you for the Twitch sub. Awesome, the Prime, the, I love the Prime sub too, guys. Makes me feel extra good um, that uh, that you're just kind of, if you already have Amazon Prime, you get that Prime sub, that way you don't have to actually give me any money. You're already getting your, your Prime benefits. Moonbryon tomorrow, I think we're gonna pull it. I keep saying that, I know. Well, I know it's part seven, and I said I think every single time that we were going to pull it, but we can do it. It's gonna happen eventually. We've uh, we've proven that we can pull cards that we need. That great tusk is just a just a Moonbryon practice round. Timo Main says Moon viewing ceremony tomorrow. Yes, we're gonna we're gonna view the moon the the moon tomorrow. Still a very large set. It's insane how many reverses you get from these uh, these packs. I do like the double reverse thing. I think that makes collecting the reverses um, reasonable. When you have 198 cards and most of those have a reverse, uh, getting one or less reverses per pack is that's rough. It's very rough. I know most people don't care about the reverses, but Timo Main says he's gonna watch from work. All right, don't get in trouble. But you're welcome to uh, to join from work. These are the reverses are pretty wild. You can kind of you, you kind of don't see the reverse at all from certain angles, especially on camera. But I don't know. I say that and now we can see it from every angle. There. Yeah, the uh, the sorting man, I, it ate up so many penny sleeves with the the three hollows per pack. So like every single pack, you're using three penny sleeves, uh, and sleeving them just took a really long time. But again, guys, I'd recommend if you're opening packs, sleeve your your reverses, anything with foil on it. Just get some penny sleeves. Get the ultra pearl ones. Pokenass the says the moon is near half by now. Rattle it will be around 20, 22nd April to twenty fourth of April to see it full, and if the moon brown will show by this day, you have to grade it, <laughs> grade it with a pedigree. Um, probably. I don't think give me a pedigree for like how many packs they opened. Dime Card says, did you run into any reverses where you only had one of? I think I had two or more of everything. Uh, and then I actually found some more after that. Because um, I didn't... Uh, when I when I opened the three cases, I apparently wasn't sorting as well as I, I should have been. I missed a couple of them. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm pretty sure I had two of everything or more. Some I had a ton of. Some I didn't. Um, the only thing that was like... Yeah, that I said at the start of the stream... Biggie John, thank you for the uh, sub on Twitch. Another Prime sub, guys. Thank you for the Primes. Appreciate that. All the, the Bezos, Bezos subs. Timo Main says, do you sell any of your singles extras that you pull? Uh, yes. I sold the large majority of, like, the, the higher end stuff. Um... Usually I'll have like a a second set of reverses that I that I send to a friend of mine um, that I've always she does master sets as well um, so we always just kind of trade traded cards over the years uh, that we needed for each other. Timo Main says, "Hit me up if you have a playset of nest balls." Um, I definitely I only had the one extra gold one. Do you need? Do you, do you need just regular nest balls? Just 
Just the regular ones? Uh, I definitely have those. Definitely have those. I need to go through and like sort the the trainers. I have them all separated out, uh, but I need to like put them in order. Uh, and I usually list those as like play sets. Usually don't make any money off that really, but other than the stuff that's really playable, or if somebody buys a bunch of bunch of sets. BC3 says, I still want to see you shotgun that beer when you pull the Moonbrion. Uh, I don't know. I think that might have only applied to that stream. We'll see how I'm feeling. It might it might call for a celebration. Of that sort. We got a Palmy. Looking surprised. That's like the surprised Pikachu. Tommy edition. Dun, dun. It is a it is a large set. So even though like the pull rates are really good uh, in terms of like what you get per pack when you're getting like a hit in every three packs, which isn't really that far off from uh, from what we saw with the trainer gallery sets, I guess it's just the the higher rarity stuff isn't as hard to obtain, uh, or to at least get one of, or you get them more often, I guess. Pokenass says, "Rattle, imagine you get two Umbreons tomorrow. Man, that would uh, I wouldn't be upset with that. We just break the seal, and all of a sudden we get Moonbreons everywhere." Palmot. The um, the hollows do not need to be in every pack. That I kind of uh, that's a hard disagree on that. Um, the amount of each hollow that I have is insane. Like it's it's completely unnecessary. There weren't enough hollows in the set to have one in every pack to make it. There's there's zero chase there. I mean I get I I don't know if that's what they were going for. Jake says, a great stream the other day. I agree. That was an awesome stream. Pretty awesome uh, turnout. Had a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, I never thought in a trillion years, even with easier pull rates, better pull rates, that uh, that we would finish the set. That was that was lucky. I was feeling... I definitely took a gamble when we opened the third case. Torsten says, there was a guy doing free card cleaning and polishing at our trade night last week. He says he was cleaning tons of cards. Is that still frowned upon? Uh, yeah, so if you're polishing, uh, you're removing part of the card. And uh, that is definitely altering the card. So uh, if you're just wiping off dirt from the card, different story. Uh, but any times that, that you're, there, you're removing scratches, essentially you're removing area around the scratch to make it less noticeable. But... Yeah, essentially, you, you ruin the cards. Um, it should be that the grading companies catch that stuff every single time. Uh, they don't, uh, which is pretty sad because that's what they claim to be doing. But, uh, but yeah, essentially, the, the card is altered at that point. I wouldn't buy it um, if I knew that that was uh, what was going on, that that's what uh, happened to it. That puts it into perspective in any way. Same with if you... Uh, any sort of trimming or... Uh, trimming is tough with Pokemon with the rounded borders. Um, it's more of a thing in sports, but... Teemo Main says, CGC grader's been sleeping lately. Um, CGC's just been hard on the we're going to grade anything and everything train. Uh, and we've already seen it kind of bite them in the butt a few times. So... That's been a whole ordeal. I did also sell off my extra like Maridons and Guard of Wars and stuff like that that people are gonna want to put in decks. Um, kept kept my one copy. I mean, if you were trying to like min max every single like dollar, 
Um, you could probably sell that sort of thing and then buy it back later on uh, when it's no longer desirable for uh, the TCG. Same with, uh, I think it was Josh that pointed out, uh, Jedi Master Josh that pointed out the fact that the Reggie Alecki just, Reggie Alecki VMAX skyrocketed in price uh, because it's desired by players at the moment. So if you have extras of those, that's a, that's a good one to, to sell or trade off at the moment. Ultra, what's going on? Timo says, I disgustingly over-ordered my Guardies. What, did you get, like, extra copies? You got more than four? Timo says, if Scarlet and Violet boxes would drop under $90, I'd invest heavy. So it would take quite a bit, I think, at this point with the new... Uh, MSRP and stuff like that for uh, for boxes to drop in under that they would have to have overprinted it pretty 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 heavily. Regardless, even the stuff that they did overprint, um, eventually it's gonna go up. We saw it with uh, I guess Sun and Moon Base still hasn't kind of really done much in comparison to other sets, uh, but like that thing was they overprinted the crap out of it, and even all the XY era stuff. People do need to get used to the sealed product does not immediately go up always, every time, instantly. Um, yeah, Evolutions. Evolutions was... How many years was that? Just didn't go, didn't do anything. Uh, and uh, it was in every product. People were upset about it. And then eventually, all the new people into the hobby, they're all excited because they never got to experience Evolutions. I mean, everyone that everyone, I'm pretty sure everyone liked uh, liked evolutions when it came out. Dope says I'm away from the house for training. My wife had a difficult time bringing my PSA Pikachu order in today. Yeah, mine was heavy. I don't know how heavy it was exactly. I should have weighed it. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a it was a big boy box. It had the three cases in it. Uh, it had some penny sleeves. And then it had some of those, uh, the new milk cartons. One of his, like, one of his big boxes. I would imagine that's probably what you got if you, if you got cases. And if she had a hard time with it. Dime Card says, did you see your short cameo in Pokeball video two weeks ago? I did not. Was it a good one? I watch a lot of uh, Pokemon YouTube, a lot of YouTube in general. Uh, not necessarily always Pokemon content. Uh, just when I'm working on stuff, I'm usually watching watching YouTube at the same time. So we got a Florges, very sick, nasty. We got the uh, Dedene. Does anyone have a which which one's the better Dedene, guys? The flower one or the berry one? Showed me being the Pokemon detective. Yes. Detective of sorts. I think it was the the way I put it. When, when, when I, uh, when I told the lady I was a Pokemon detective of sorts, and she asked me if I was a police officer, and I was like, no, not what I meant. Detective, like, Detective Pikachu. Not law enforcement. Po Pokemon, Pokemon law enforcement. Clef Key! Mm -mm. V Avatar says, do the milk 
cartons contain exclusive cards exclusively in English? Uh, y yes. So they have, uh, they have like the boss's orders, um, the, the full art Cyrus one, and then they have the Cyrus, but it has like a, uh, Cosmos Hollow foil on it. Um, but yeah, I don't think, uh, they came in different products in, in, uh, in Japan. I don't know if there's any, I don't know if any of the other languages got milk cartons or will get milk cartons similar to that. Um, but, uh, they're definitely one of my favorite products. They're very easy to break down, uh, when you're opening a lot of stuff. It just, uh, it makes a big difference when there's less garbage. Uh, it's just, it's cardboard. Very environmentally friendly products. It's, uh, the deck box, the sleeves. I know some people don't like the sleeves. Uh, but I think the sleeves are decent. Uh, they're not good for displaying cards. Uh, because they have the, like, matte front on them, similar to the ETB sleeves. Uh, but, uh, they are, they're decent for shuffling. They're, they're not as good as, like, a, a KMC hyper, hyper mat like these bad boys would be. But... German has the same ones. That makes sense. It wouldn't surprise me if, like, also, like, Italian and, uh... Trying to think of the other stuff that's printed in uh, in the U.S., the other language, French and stuff like that, maybe too. I would imagine are probably probably similar products. So I think that those would be a pretty popular item. Uh, there's a lot of places in Europe that have like different packaging and products. I think mostly due to like constraints on how much garbage and probably how hard they are to ship if it's printed, if it's any any of it's printed. I think it was all being printed in the US at one point and maybe not anymore. It's weird. They do a lot of weird things. Timo says we print Spanish in Spain. Alright, so maybe Italian is printed in the US. I accidentally got Italian Cosmic Eclipse in my Costco product one time. Jake says, the sleeves need more clarity, less fog. Yeah, the old ETB sleeves had more clarity, but the only issue was they shuffled really, really bad. So, it's kind of like a, it's a double-edged sword. Do they, do they make the sleeves for, like, display purposes, or do they make them for the players? I think the... Elite Trainer Box in general was more designed uh, for players. They got the the brick of energies. They got the coins, the markers, um, that kind of stuff in it. So, same with the milk cartons are kind of player based, where they have the deck box and the sleeves. So, and the was it the trainer toolkits? Dove says, do you use Perfect Fits for the first sleeve or just a penny? So they are uh, KMC Perfect Fits. Don't buy the Ultra Pro ones. They suck mean wieners uh down in the description should be a link for these the perfect fits and then uh you got these hyper mats uh also kmc link in the description i think the link is for the black ones but they make all sorts of different colors if you want purple or white or whatever yeah kmc perfect fits kmc hyper mats I need to add that for as a uh, thank you, Ultra, for the uh, the link. I need to add that to the uh, stream elements command. We got the griever, the candle dog, the the dog with the lit wick on its head. Timo says, Spain is unique, and by law we have to make, I think, it's 95% of all our goods. There's a whole video on how it costs Spain so much more to grow their own rice, etc. Oh, yeah, that would be... There's certain stuff that's probably not ideal climate and or... Uh, I guess cards in general would just be more expensive if you have to produce them in a smaller amount exclusively there. 
That's interesting now. I didn't uh, didn't know that. That's good to know. We're now slightly smarter. We're still doing our best here to gather information and become the intelligent beings <laughs> that we aspire to be. But now we know one more fact that may or may not be useful in the future. Do -do -do. Prime Ape. It's crazy to me that Prime Ape got an evolution. That's kind of a out of nowhere. Annihilate. Alright, let's jam this bad boy in there. Annihilate, such a sick Pokemon, says Ultra. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about any of the uh, Mankey Prime Ape Annihilates. Torsten says, for the master set, do you count the non-hollow professor's research that came in the pre-release box? And there's a hollow version of Grievered from the Mimikyu box? Uh, yes. So anything that has the same set symbol. So if it's a promo from the set, no. Um, in this instance, like, I guess we we do have to add our, our, uh, our LeChonks, I think, are the only ones at this point in time. Uh, but where this says, like, SV1 on it or if it had the set symbol back when they had the set symbol, um, I would count this as a variant and it would go in the same binder. I'd just put it at the back. Well, it's an actual card from the set too. It's like 155 out of 198. It's just a different version because it's it's a reverse, but it's also got the, the Pokemon Center logo on there. So Any of the non-holo versions, stuff like that. Uh, the crack dice, the uh, anything stamped. Um, Jordan says, do you have the GameStop Chonk? I do not. I don't have the GameStop Chonk, and I'm going to have to get uh, the Best Buy Chonk from someone um, because I don't think we get those in Canada. We have Best Buy, but we I don't think we get the promos here. Max says, Rattle, do you need any the Chonks? Yes, I do. I need, uh, I need the GameStop one, the UK one, and the... Uh, and the Best Buy one. I need all three of the the other ones. I do I do have the the Pokemon Center LeChonk. The whole back of the binder is just gonna be LeChonks. But uh we'll see. I need I should have uh should have did that today when I was out. I should have stopped at GameStop to see if they had the the single single blisters, promo blisters and the three pack blisters. Um, because I do need those uh, those promos as well. Jedi Master Josh says, I wonder who could get those for you. Hmm. Is it you? Am I gonna have I'm gonna have to bribe you? I forget I I already forget which uh, reverses you said that you wanted for your deck. Wolf says, I haven't seen anyone else attempt a master set in one setting. Um, so yeah, it would, it would just be like a complete set, I guess, because we didn't have the Lechonks. Um those would have been very hard. I'd have to have like it helicoptered in, or something even faster than a, a very fast helicopter in from the uh, the UK. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's uh, there's been quite a few. I, don't know, I guess a few at this point where uh, Rev tried to complete a set, uh, and we, we saw him got he got hung up on like the Aerodactyl. I think there was a couple other times where he like almost had the complete set and then just had to give up. But the, and he spent like 12 hours. But those were. Those were definitely much more difficult sets. Although, I mean, the same thing could definitely happen uh, with Scarlet Violet. You could spend 12 hours opening and not get the whole thing. But I'm also glad that the reverses were in, like, incredible condition. <laughs> Plus, he says, PSA Pikachu does a world tour before shipping your order. Yeah. Then we need... It goes to the Pokemon Center. It goes to the UK. Everywhere. All right. It's bad enough with uh, PSA Pikachu. Uh, for anyone that's wondering, PSA Pikachu is in the, the United States. The majority of the people that watch the channel are in the U.S., so it makes sense. 
Um, but uh, he does his absolute best to get stuff shipped uh, across the border. You can buy from Canada. Just uh, just be very aware that uh, there are import fees, uh, etc. So don't uh, don't forget about those. It's gonna show up. Um, well, I guess man, you, you kind of have to take into consideration that there's no um, there's no tax on it, but you pay the import tax when yeah. It's tough. There are a couple options for the uh, the Canadians. Um, we got the nosecards.ca, which is a pretty good uh, spot to pre-order your stuff as well. I'm not sure how much uh, Scarlet and Violet they have at the moment. I should have checked beforehand, but I have, man, just struggling to get everything done today. Fit says, sad that Twitch is so far ahead in stream time. And everyone, yeah, well, you don't have any spoilers here. People are allowed to use the, the platform of their choice. Uh, if you guys want to tune in on YouTube, if you want to tune on tune in on Twitch, if you want to tune in on both, then feel free to do so. Extra love you if you're on both. Probably don't want to have the audio running from both of those at the same time. It might be a little bit confusing to hear me twice. So I'm sure they're not perfectly synced. And if they were, it would be like this weird double audio. We got cloth. I remember when this bad boy was released, the like the Pokemon design and everyone was like going nuts. They're like, oh my god, it's it's a crab. Or Krabby. Kingler. Timo says, oh my god, he pulled the illustration Miriam. Who did? I mean, a lot of, I saw a lot of people pull it. I think it's awesome that uh, it's a little bit more obtainable than previous kind of chase cards. Um, you guys just just buckle up. Just just wait. Once we get the uh, Iono that is playable, we'll see some value in a trainer card. Waifu trainer card. We got the cry down. Damn this bad boy, little Grimer. Grimer action. Everyone's favorite Pokemon. Drew, thank you for the sub with the Prime. Good job, guys, with the Prime. Extra appreciated. You got that if you got that Amazon Prime, you get a free subscribe on uh, on Twitch every month. Uh, and I am extremely honored uh, for anyone that chooses to use that on me. Fitz, you don't have your your Prime linked? Oh my goodness, we are friends off. But we'll be friends back on once you link your Prime. Spiritome. I don't know, how do you, I was going to say, how do you make it like an exciting artwork for Spirit Home? Uh, but then I remembered that the uh, Trainer Gallery one was pretty sick. I guess you need to like have a character or kind of something going on there with the Spirit Home in order to make it uh, sick nasty. We got Dime Card's Wife with the follow. Slowly but surely, we'll build, we'll, we'll build, building up the Twitch, guys. We're building it up. It's appreciated. <laughs> if it says all friends on. <laughs> if it's you're gonna sign up your wife for my, or link your link your wife's Amazon account. It's kind of like a family account at that point. It seems it's probably a waste to have uh, two separate Amazon Amazon Prime accounts for for a husband and a wife, unless you don't want to see what the other person is ordering. Then maybe.
<clears throat> we got the mastiff. You guys, hey, listen here. I didn't pull the Moonbrion yet, but we're going to. Then we'll be all right. We gotta get that the the financial burden that is the Moonbrion hunt out of the way. Once we pull it, then we break even, right? <laughs> Time card says we share when I try it for you. Appreciate it. Somber Shark with the follow over there. Some new followers on the Twitch. Like that. Like to see it. West G says market price today for it is 614. For the Moonbrion, 614? That is that's crazy, guys. I know it's hard to pull, and it's extremely hype dogged, but that is uh, that is wild, wildly expensive. That's why. That's kind of why I think that uh, that modern was getting a little bit out of hand. I get that the the brown is a little bit of an exception, but even like the Giratina and stuff like that, where it's like, I don't know what Giratina is now. I don't want to misspeak on the on the price of it, like two three hundred bucks. Ooh 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 ooh. JK four twenty says. Oh yeah, I didn't I did forget to change the stream title, didn't I? I'm drunk. Let's see um see what we got here. We can change it really quick. Oh. Copy. We're, I'm a I'm a Twitch noob, guys. We're noobs here. Maybe I can change. Can I not? Can I can I edit? I can edit. I can edit. I'm doing it. There we go. We're not we're not pulling the set anymore. We are Pokemon binder progressing. I don't want to confuse anyone. Giratina is 3.30 now? Holy moly. Yeah, it's wild. It's crazy that the uh, the Lugia isn't more. I would think that the Lugia would be more expensive than the, the Tina, but maybe it's the artwork that's kind of carrying it. Or maybe the fact that the Lost Origin more expensive than Silver Tempest, or more difficult to find. Jumbo Fit says we need the Meltang milking gif. Yeah, we need uh, we need to change up some like sounds and stuff like that. If I have time tomorrow, we'll we'll uh, we'll we'll give a weekly upgrade to the uh, the stream setup. Remember, we're just uh, we're just noobs. Noobs here. Poke World, welcome to the chat. Alright. Tom says, recommend watching SM Pratt's video on Black Label slash Moonbrion. Some good talking points. Uh yeah, I haven't watched that yet. I did see the the thumbnail pop up in my like recommended or whatever, but uh Yeah, I'm sure I'll tell I'll take a look at that. I mean it's kinda I don't know what's going on with Beckett recently. Um, but, uh, it seems like the, the black labels are, they're coming up a little bit, uh, too often or more often than they used to. So I don't know if that's like a desperate swap up from them to give people more incentive to actually send the cards to them, uh, in hopes of getting that black label now that it's, I guess, more obtainable. Um, but I need to make a video on Beckett too. There's, they've been doing all kinds of weird stuff. They like changed their grading scale and then changed it back after people criticized it, uh, which is not too not too different than before. They they changed. They were like they made these these new cases and put made these giant displays for them and then they kind of backtracked and claimed that they weren't changing the cases after people told them not to. I don't I don't get it. Instead of like asking people what they want, they just kind of. They go for it, they make a prototype, they say it's going to happen, and then they... Wes says, too scared to send it and something happened. I mean, that's also a possibility, but... I mean, it's kind of a possibility with anything. Uh, when you're sending stuff back and forth, 
There's a chance that it gets lost in the mail, stolen in the mail. That the minimum wage grader puts his mayo fingers on it. All kinds of stuff like that. Alright. I really hope that I don't accidentally put something in the wrong slot here. Um, I'm kind of paying attention, but we definitely gotta we gotta keep an eye on the chat here. TCG Setsuna says, I need to do this, but I've been lazy. I have so many boxes that need sorting and to put them in binders. Yeah, I have uh, I have a serious amount of this, so I'm very grateful that people actually want to come and hang out with me uh, while I do it, because I, it was never going to get done, if not for uh, for these streams, these Monday streams. Um, to be fair, though, I did, like, organize and prep for this quite a bit, so... But the uh, the ability to come on here and chat with people while I do it is, is definitely... Definitely a fun experience and a big help. Jared says, have you completed Crown Zenith yet? I have. Full set. And I don't think there's any um, alternate versions for those cards, so it's technically a master set, even though it's basically just what you can pull from packs. Crown Zenith is amazing. I think that's... Uh, also, part of the reason why people are not so excited about Scarlet and Violet, um, their expectations have been kind of like set to uh, set to eleven uh, with with Scarlet or with uh, Crown Zenith being so ridiculously good. But it's kind of it's like an end of an era thing, guys. We're, we're gonna we're gonna build up. You'll see as Scarlet and Violet goes on, we'll have some kind of different rarities added. We'll have some kind of gimmick that's similar to like the Amazing Rares or Break Cards. We're Prism Stars. We're going to have the same set. We're going to have a Charizard set. I think it's already been revealed that we're going to have like some kind of weird uh, Dark Terra uh, Charizard. There's all kinds of different Charizards that they can uh, incorporate. Different rarities. Maybe they'll have like SIRs, but they're shiny Pokemon or something. Who knows? There's like a billion different things that they can do to like create like hype creep, uh, if you want to call it that, or like snazzy rarity creep as the sets go through uh, so you gotta keep in mind compare this to like a sword and shield base this is pretty banging compared to sword and shield base we got not only did we get the gold legendaries but we got alt art legendaries essentially and then there's a lot of trainer cards as well in the set uh, which is largely to do with like when rotation happens it kind of needs needs that stuff So, Wolf says, I completed Crown Zenith, loved it. I like but not love Scarlet and Violet. Uh, I think that's fair. I mean, Crown Zenith is a uh, Crown Zenith is amazing. It's just, it's packed full of like, I guess not trainer, trainer gallery, Galarian gallery, whatever you want to call it. The old switch up with the GG instead of the TG. Um, but uh, yeah, ridiculous set. Filled with stuff. Filled with awesome stuff. Big time, like, awesome hit rates. Uh, and again, like, the cards are not going to be necessarily that expensive at the time. But later on, people are going to be like, oh, remember Crown Zenith? And then the price on that stuff will usually go up. People want to open it in the future. Same with a lot of those, like, specialty sets. Uh, people end up wanting it later on, so... Lechonk. So many Lechonks in this binder. Pigs and, pigs and bike lizards, what's not to love, says Pokemon Bystander. The piggies. Lots of pigs. Shout out to uh, Pokegirl Lauren. The, uh, I think she's building a, a pig deck. Oink alone in deck because she keeps pulling them. This bad boy right here. The pig squad. Poker bro with the uh, the pig emoji spam in the Twitch chat.
Operator Neptune says, what's your favorite Pokemon of this gen? I don't know if that was on purpose or if like that was just coincidence that you just said that as we're putting the mice into the binder. But it's definitely, definitely by far Mouse Hold is my my favorite Pokemon from this gen. This Pokemon is sick, nasty. Uh, we, we got the sick, nasty gimmick. It has an attack called uh, Population Bomb where it uh, it attacks 10 times. Uh, and uh, you can combine that with an item and uh, basically like 92% of the time it hits 10 times. So it's just like smack and stuff 10 times. Uh, it's really funny when you're in like a raid battle uh, and it's like smack, 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 smack. And like everyone else is like doing their one attacks and you're just smacking everything with your, your population bomb mouse hold. So hopefully, I'm really hoping that there's like a playable mouse hold EX card that comes uh, into the, the game. Umbra, thank you very much for the Prime sub. Appreciate it. Squawkabilly. GTA mouse hold. Yeah, the Mouse Boys, I think they're they're right up there. Um, maybe tied for my second favorite Pokemon. Mobile is still my number one favorite. Uh, but uh, Mouse Hold, Whimsicott, right there. Uh, we got Shuckle is definitely in the list. I need to make a, uh, a top six favorite Pokemon list. I'm just not sure exactly where the the remainder of those slots would uh, would come in. Spunky Weirdo says, need to use the Terra Pokemon to bring out the Crystal Onyx. Hmm. I thought that's pretty much what they were doing. And it kind of looked like that. Um, before the whole Terra mechanic and stuff was introduced. I think that kind of would have been a, uh, a neater gimmick than, than the Terra type. I don't know. I mean, it's less of a, less, less appalling now that I guess we're used to it. But, I, I don't know. The chandeliers on the head thing is just... Still seems unnecessary to me. Alright, another stack of cards here. We got the uh, Flamigo. Good way to learn the new Pokemon's names. I guess, like, my... Playthrough on the game itself was, uh... Was definitely a huge help with that. Although uh, there's a lot of the uh, the characters from the school that I didn't really know. Miriam being one of them, uh, just because I didn't do the the school side quest stuff. I didn't bother to to do do that stuff. But I know people that did. I think Rubik's was one of the people that uh, that went hardcore on the uh, the school side quest. But maybe that's just is it maybe if, if you're like a Harry Potter fan, that's Something that you'd rather do. Crushing ham. All right, we got another crushing hammer. The freaking crushing hammers. Flip a coin if heads and discard an energy from one of your opponent's Pokemon. Very annoying. Um, and uh, can be pretty brutal, especially decks that are trying to like make you stall or not be able to attack or whatever it is. Pretty crazy stuff. We got the uh, Defiance Band. Mac the Hypnotist says Sushi Fish is my favorite new gen Pokemon. Yeah, Tatsugiri is definitely my second favorite from uh, from Scarlet and Violet. Mac says I did the school stuff for the items. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, it probably would have been a good call. Um, I think Rage, Rage Quit was begging me to do, uh, there was one of the school quests that gave you the, uh, false swipe, uh, so that you could, uh, easily catch Pokemon, and I refused to do it, I just throw balls at the Pokemon until it's caught, most of the time. <laughs> 
And it drove him absolutely nuts. The spinder is getting thick. We're getting thick. Ugh. Energy search. Fit says Tinkaton is cool too. Yeah, uh, Tinkaton is cool. Um, not as cool as uh, Tatsugiri though. I thought about putting uh, all three Tatsugiri variants, um, all three shinies in my in my party. Um, or you could, like, if you really like Tatsugiri, you could make a full Tatsugiri team. Uh, you could have, like, the three regular ones and the three, um, the three shiny ones would be pretty funny. Max says, why grind when you can grind so you don't have to grind? True. Uh, to be fair, uh, KD did kick my butt at the start of the game, which is pretty embarrassing, but... That's why I should have uh, I should have killed some wild Pokemon along the way. I mean, I knocked them out, right? Should have knocked out some. Uh, we should have we should have did a little bit of grinding along the way. We didn't. We got overconfident. Thought the game was going to be as easy as Sword and Shield. Uh, and this this lady, boy, did she teach me a lesson. Didn't even stand a chance. Jake says the first DLC is going to be just as played out as the Urshifu DLC. Maybe. Hopefully it doesn't suck. Dan King says, what brand binder do you use? Uh, there's a link down in the description, um, but it is a it is a Nex protection. Um, so we'll take a little look at it here. Pretty much like the standard side loading. They have the zipper ones as well, but I don't know. I prefer the. Uh, I never use the elastic. I just kind of let it, let it be. Um, but uh, but yeah, Dex protection. Um, if the set will fit in it, I usually use the nine pocket ones. Uh, but with this set or other like really large sets, they won't fit unless you use the 480 card. And even better, stuff like Fusion Strike doesn't fit in this 480 card. So you get to use two 360 card binders for that one. Fitz, did you end up binding all three um, shinies of the Tatsugiri? We got Miriam. I double sleeve uh, the the cards as well, uh, which is some would argue overkill. Uh, I would probably agree with them, um, but that's just the way to do it. It can be any card. It can be a common, whatever, uh, and it, it still gets the, the same double sleeve that everything gets, whether it's a first edition base Charizard uh, or it's Nimona here, uh, number 180 of 198. It's getting the, it's getting the double sleeve. Uh, West G says, what card did you pull the most in this set? Do you mean in terms of like hits? Like big hits? Gold cards, I, the most I got was the lightning energy. Um, the SIRs, the one I got the most was the Spy Dops. I think I got three of them. Which sucks because it was like a $5 card. Even though it's an SIR. Um... Trying to think of the other ones. Full art, uh, cave mummy, which was pretty nice. That's a good full art to get dupes of. I think I got three of those. Um, oh man, there's a ton that I only got like one copy of each card. All the like rare stuff. The uh, Don Dozo from the uh, illustration rare was definitely the one I hit the most of. Um, a lot of those I only had one or two copies. All right, let's slide this bad boy over a little bit. Nest ball.
Dope says, do you double top load or do you side load with the perfect fit then top load? So I put the card in upside down in the penny sleeve and then it, like right side up into the outer sleeve. So, um, the pal pad here, I would put it in this way and then in the, the outer sleeve this way so that it's kind of got like protection on the top. But I mean, I don't know if it necessarily needs it when it's in the binder like this. Uh, I do the same thing with the, uh, the cards that I use in my deck. So typically more of a, uh, a player thing. Uh, to do the, the double sleeve. Don't use the perfect fits if you're not double sleeving because there's no point. Uh, they're a pain to get them out, but also if you drop them uh, and they don't have the outer sleeve on it, uh, like the corners are more vulnerable. Yeah, it's very secure. It's like triple wrapped to the extreme. Extra protected to the max. Forehead in chat says, where's the good stuff? Oh, it's coming. We gotta we gotta do the trainers here first. There's a lot of trainers. Again, it's a base set, so in terms of like for playability reasons, they gotta like print a bunch of this stuff. Uh, so that players have actual trainer cards to use. Um pretty I think it's pretty standard. Uh the, the base sets have a lot of that introductory like balls and you always get the pogo the pogo balls gotta get the, the reprint. Uh, usually never played uh, unless it's like pre-release or something like that we are almost at the the juicy stuff Again, very large set. Uh, I'm probably going to play these in my physical deck. Uh, I just have a ton of them because the hollows are very easy to come by and, and Scarlet and Violet based because they give you one in every pack. So, um, very cool Kurosaki art of the Cave Mama. Can't go wrong with that. The Prof Research. The double, the double prof research. There are a lot of professors research cards. We had the juniper milk. We had juniper. We had, man, we had everything. We had oak from the uh, celebration set. But those are always kind of good because you can you can play any version of professors research, uh, no matter what the professor is, as long as professors research is in the format, is legal in the format. Uh, you can play those so you can fa you can play your favorite cave mama or science daddy whatever you you prefer J jake says is it, is it pronounced spy dops or spid ops i would think spy dops but you know what i can't say i've ever heard an official uh reading or uh mention of the name so <laughs> it is a, it's a, it's a spider so probably spy dobs if I had to guess that's how I've been saying it ultra says he can confirm how can you confirm that ultra have you heard it or is that just how you say it we need like an official Pokemon source I usually go by like whatever the uh the anime tends to say. I was one of the people that said uh, Rayquaza, and then I changed it to uh, Rayquaza after I found out that I was wrong. Vitality Band. Sometimes it gets pronounced multiple ways uh, by official sources, so at that point you just you just give up. Say whatever you want at that point. One, the other, or... Ooh, this is kind of cool how the set ends uh, right on the... 
on the youngster here. And then we get into the juicy stuff on a whole fresh new page. That's kind of satisfying. All right, we got the ETB full of the, the bangers. Mac the Hypnotist is saying that it's a mellow latte. It sounds delicious, but that is definitely not correct. Thomas says Ultra is a bot, so we can confirm. Yeah, but I feel like bots are wrong. Sometimes. This Dolive only came out of box 16. We didn't have a Dolive until 16 boxes in. How does that happen? There's just a lot of these uh, illustration rares. So, you know, sometimes you, you just keep hitting the same ones. Um, you get them pretty frequently. I forget exactly what uh, what the percentage was of packs that had them. Uh, I did cover that in the, in the recap video. If you missed it, I'm pretty sure we set a record on the set. And there's no way anyone is going to beat the... The amount of packs that we did this one in, what is it, 581? Uh, the Don Dozo, I got a bunch of, um, but only one dollar towards the end there. Again, it's it's something that like, we were we were just really really trying to pull the whole set at that point in time. Uh, you shouldn't be opening additional booster boxes to try and get a dollar and a and a great tusk. That is, uh, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense other than the fact that we had to do it for the stream. That is a nice looking page. How can you how can you not like this set? You look at that page. Ryan Ocelot says I think it's the same as TG around three per box. Yeah, that sounds about right. It was worth it for the for the for the stream. We're never gonna forget the day that we sat down and we opened the entire set. These are also beautiful. We got the Ralts, the uh Krillia. It's kind of a shame that this isn't going to go through with a whole second page. But it's okay. We're going to put our other stuff on here. The binder kind of needs to be trained uh, to be this this thick. It's not, uh, not broken in yet. But we're kind of bowing out a little bit. Oh, wait. We, get, we do got more. Oh, hopefully we... If this works out to the exact... I can't remember how many there are, but if it ends on this page, that would be... Oh my god, it does! Guys, it does. This is designed for the four pocket. Look at how satisfying this is going to be. We got the Starly, and we got the Squovit. Ooh, we almost lost our baked beans. Spy Dops. Yeah, that is awesome. It's front and back. Oh my goodness. That is the most satisfying set I've ever put in a binder. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, look at that. It's just like a full front and back. That is that is sick. That had to be on purpose, right? Even if they did it by accident, I it is it is giving me something. Hmm. We only, uh, we only ended up getting one of the, uh, the Gyarados EX, but we got three of the Arcanine, I think, which is pretty crazy. We need a, uh, another refreshment. I'm sort of taking my time with this because it's, uh, it is the satisfying part. Uh, it did take a long time to uh, to sort out all the cards that needed to be in the set uh, to make sure that I had all of them. Um, again, it's just pain in the butt that uh, the the way that stuff was like seated, it wasn't very random. Uh, so if people are seeing that, like if you end up getting a lot of the same hollows and stuff from your booster box, or maybe it was just in my instance where it wasn't being properly dispersed. We got a great task. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Dope says, can't stand that hairstyle on the Arcanine. Um, yeah. Rai says, I ordered some of those sleeves you got, but my order got delayed. Did you order, did you order them on, uh, on Amazon? With Amazon, you got to be a little bit, um, if they're like direct from Amazon, they can be quick. But sometimes if, if it's showing that it's like a seller that's shipping them from Japan or something like that, they could take quite a while. So I usually try to make sure before I run out of them, uh, when I'm starting to get a little bit low that I order them in advance, just because sometimes you can get them on, uh, on Amazon Japan as well, but it usually ends up being around the same price. So if I can get them. Uh, if I can get them from a warehouse, an Amazon warehouse, I'll just do that instead. Oinkaloin. I don't know why the game stores. Maybe we need to convince PSA Pikachu to, to stock them. If it would be worth it. We'll have to see if we can get them in uh, in decent quanti quantities. I know he has, he has the Ultra Pro penny sleeves, uh, which he often sends along with the booster boxes and stuff like that. All right, no, 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 guys, check this out. The Pokemon are a full page too, the full art Pokemon. Perfect fits. <laughs> Amy says, "Sorry about the last six on Amazon. Got them today. Otherwise, ship, ship, shipment was much much later." Yeah, that can happen. So sometimes it's uh, it's tough to find them. Rai says, "How many packs of uh, evolving skies are you ripping tomorrow?" Uh, we'll do the uh, we'll do the standard two hundred. And then uh, maybe we'll set some kind of goal or something uh, in order to like do a, a 50 bonus round. It's bad enough opening uh, the 200 packs. 200 packs is pretty good in terms of like, I'm not like sweating, like opening them as fast as possible. Uh, I can still kind of sit back, enjoy opening the, uh, the packs. Uh, it's pretty much two hours exactly. Yeah, maybe they should sell Oink, Oink Cologne. Jake says he's wearing it. Pocket Monster says like four booster boxes. It should be more than that, um, isn't it? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's get, let's get the calculator out. 200 divided by 36. Is five and a half booster boxes. 250 divided by 36 is 6.94 booster boxes. So it's pretty much seven booster boxes if we do the bonus round. Uh, so it's a case, case and change, case in a box, which is pretty wild. It's uh, getting expensive. We'll say that. But. We've committed to it. All right, we got the, the full art trainers do not quite span the whole thing, but there are four Pokemon EXs, SIRs, that are gonna fit across the bottom here. If this like if this is like thrown off and there's like one card on the end of a page or something, I'm gonna cry. Great Tusk, I know, I guess there's more than four because we got the, hopefully this works out really well. I'll give you guys a better look at the uh, the page. We only pulled the one Miriam full art, which is kind of sad. We did get two of this Coridon, which is definitely one of the most beautiful cards in the set. Love the little Dedenne there. Yeah, the pages are looking nice. Man, a full binder. I've never... I don't think I've ever completed a set before putting it into a binder either. So this is a this is a new feeling for me. Billy says, "I'll buy your lonesome again." No, I'm not buying my lonesome, Billy. I have the chat. Chat is keeping me company here. We got we got the two chats now. Jacques having a nap. We only get the one copy of Jacques, which is uh, definitely glad we got the extra Miriam. Um. Beautiful card. I know it's not as valuable as the Japanese one, 
we don't have to pay six billion dollars for it but still just as beautiful we get the penny at the desk ultra says use it as a coaster no we're not doing that i do like these these gold cards just because it's kind of tradition at this point billy are you we gotta pay attention here billy i did master the set well, we didn't master the set because I need the I need the pigs. We did complete the set in the uh, in the opening. We opened everything that we could possibly open in 581 packs, and it's a world record, and no one's ever gonna beat it. In like five and a half hours, 581 packs, no chance anyone's ever doing that again. And they can spend a lot of money to try. Uh, and if they do beat me, then good on them. I will accept. I will accept my defeat. We have the gold nest ball. Very beautiful. Very playable. We got the rare candy. Also very playable and usually very playable. Especially now where we have the EX cards that you have to you have to evolve into them. So that's a definitely a, definitely a good one to have. Definitely one that will be playable probably throughout the entire uh, Scarlet and Violet, Violet era. Uh, the basic lightning energy. I think I pulled I pulled three of these, which is pretty wild, and only one of the fighting energy. So, all these like hard to pull cards that I only got one of, we got really lucky. Oh my god, that is the most. Look at that set. It ends right there too. That is the most perfectly perfect thing I've ever seen. Alright, we'll go back through, backwards here. Um, uh, I think the, the most satisfying thing, though, is the fact that these uh, illustration rares fit, like, front page, back page of this four slot. Like, the fact that they're just all there, uh, that the regular set ends on this page, and this is just front and back. Beautiful. The only thing they're missing is uh, probably the yellow borders would be nice on all of these cards that we're looking at right now. But that's it. We did it. Um, not like pretty close to like a second, second set, but, uh, but yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, s slap this bad boy away. Oh, we're going to not slap the camera away. Let's see if we can't fix that a little bit. All right. I need like a mega extreme large play mat, uh, for, uh, for binder streams that we don't have. All right, let's get back into the in the ultra prism. We can probably finish this bad boy off before the end of the stream. We're getting towards the good stuff in the ultra prism. Although I'm gonna warn you guys, I'm missing the the two the two ladies um, from ultra prism. So try not to judge me too much. All right, we are on. All right, we did. We were doing side by side version. We gotta get back in. This, this has been a while since we. Uh... Pocket says both have the right to be a thing, and that uh, like both borders. <laughs> I don't know. We're gonna get back into. We're gonna cleanse our palette with some uh, some beautiful yellow border cards. The, uh, the classics, if you will. We need... Alright, so now we, these are not in the uh, the outer sleeves. So we are going to have to do that. Which is a little bit more time consuming, but... I didn't have time to prep. If we had more time to prep, these would have been already sleeved and we could look at more cards per second. We wanted to max maximize our, our viewing experience. So we'll just have to... Uh, Fill that in with good conversation. <laughs> Jedi Master Josh says, Vintage at this point? I agree. So here's... Uh, we got the Prism Star for anyone that doesn't remember. Guys, the Amazing Rares, same thing as this. It's just a different... Different, uh, different look same kind of gimmick where they add something like this every era 
we're going to see something like this in Scarlet and Violet, mark my word. I don't know what it's going to be called, but it'll be something similar to this where it's like a, a different rarity that's all of a sudden smacked into, into something. And the set name where it's introduced will have something to do with it. Kind of like Breakpoint, Breakthrough, uh, or Ultra Prism. The flop cards, yeah, the cards that like people, like man, the, the people that got so excited for amazing rares and thought they, that they were like gonna be super hard to pull, super crazy. No, they're they're just like a little side, little side thing. It's just a, a little spice, a little spice up. A little Cranidos. I don't know. I think the sun and moon reverses pretty pretty decent. Jedi Master Josh is calling for ultra. Ultra prism, ultra 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 mar. <laughs> ultra 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 is it like Beetlejuice we can we can summon you Jared says how many sets do you have completed I don't have that many completed I need to check after I have this stuff checked off I'm getting very close to having 20,000 unique cards, and I need about 8,500 or something like that. So there's still a long ways to go on the uh, on the older sets. Um, it is definitely going to help that uh, that we just banged out uh, a set before it could even exist, essentially, uh, with Scarlet and Violet. But uh, but yeah. Um, when I first got back into the hobby, uh, the first set that I completed uh, was the first edition gym challenge set. I don't know what it was. The gym sets kind of really, really did it for me. I think even before I finished like base unlimited, I, I put that together. Uh, sometime after that, I got the majority of first edition base done. Uh, and then I was missing like the Mewtwo hollow. And some of the rares. Uh, and then recently finished that. We did a did a video on the channel. I think, did I do a live? No, it wasn't a live stream, was it? I think I just did a video of uh, cracking the Mewtwo. That was back before. We could have... In this day and age, we would have made it a live stream, but... Josh says, I just got to tune in. So did you complete Scarlet and Violet? Yes, Josh, we did. Uh, in the uh, in the previous stream, and then if you if you go back uh, and watch this one, we put them all in the binder. Uh, we somehow did it in a little over five and a half hours and 581 packs. So that's my new like claim to fame that no one's ever going to be able to beat that. Um, I surprised myself even. I'm gonna have to make make myself a trophy of some kind. Dope says you have three months to save up <laughs> to do Paldi Evolved on stream. Yeah, I would imagine that we'll probably do the same thing. Um, it was the first time doing a, a mega opening stream on release day, but uh, it was a lot of fun. It uh, it was exhausting. Oh, I get to set myself up a little bit better for the next one, but um, it was uh, yeah, it was a, it was an unreal experience. I can't promise that we're gonna pull the entire set next time, um, but we're gonna try. We'll see. If it's the same kind of rarity, there's definitely a chance. But uh, we'll see. We'll probably keep it to the three cases. I think that was a good number. It was a long stream, but... But we'll see. Maybe maybe once we're big boy YouTubers, we can, we can do more than that. And we can kind of guarantee the fact that we're going to open the entire set. But for the time being, we got we to gotta rely on the fact 
uh, that we get lucky. I think that maybe that makes it more interesting too. This is like a chance that I don't finish it, right? Let's get a, di a different tune going here. For anyone that's wondering about the music that's being played in the background of the streams, uh, that is a, a YouTuber named Roshna. Uh, and you can check them check them out. They were gracious enough to let us use their uh, their Pokemon remixes uh, for for the content. So it's awesome when you guys go over there, give them a subscribe, let them know I say hi. Fitz says, what would you add to make the stream go smoother? Um, I'm not sure. I mean... I don't know. I think it's just mostly as long as we're having fun. And that's the important part. I think everyone had fun. Had a good time. I definitely had a good time. It was uh, it was an experience. I've never, I don't think I've ever opened that much. Well, maybe I have opened that much in once. Maybe no. I'm trying to think if I've opened more than that in one sitting. Like personally, just sat down and opened. Definitely not of one set in one sitting. That was uh, that was pretty wild. But also, it's nice to see that uh, that people are enjoying. Uh, the uh, the big live stream openings a lot more than the the individual videos that I was doing. Uh, we were doing openings on on the daily, uh, but it seems like people definitely uh, prefer the the big big live stream opening over the like daily kind of smaller openings. So that's what we'll stick with. It also gives the other content a little bit more room to breathe. Uh, a little bit less to manage so that I can take down some scammers when we're not opening par uh, Pokemon cards, but Jake says we like interaction. That's fair. That's fair. I mean It's always it's always fun to to open Pokemon cards with friends and that's kind of that's that's kind of what we're doing, right? We're missing a dark. I think we're missing a dark rag Prism Star. Although I'm pretty sure, I think Quackfam sent me one. There might be some cards that we. Uh, uh, man, this is is crazy. I have a crazy amount of cards that I need to swap binders on, etc. So these streams are a huge help. On the Monday streams. Pocket says I have a possible addiction to pack openings. To watching them or opening them. Pack openings are fun. I mean, it's preferable that you have like some good company, some conversation. Um, when Chad is uh, when Chad is really into it, then it makes a big difference. We have lots of jokes about the the Moonbrion stuff, which kind of adds a layer to it. If I was just opening those packs, trying to get the Moonbrion myself, it would be. Uh, I think it would be a whole lot more sad if I was just sitting there <laughs> in the dark. Opening packs, hoping that I could pull a Moonbrion. But at least I have you guys to, to you know, to make jokes about how I can't pull it. Ease the pain a little bit. We need fits to, to bring the fruit roll-ups. Maybe we need to do the, the Moonbrion stream from the, the toilet at some point. Very elaborate setup. Bring my whole PC into the washroom. Dorsten says that's the definition of a Pokeholic when you open packs alone. Um, if you open 3000 Evolving Skies by yourself, maybe. That's uh, 
But I'm sure there I'm sure there are people out there that prefer to like to sit back and relax on their own and just open uh open <laughs> open cards. Dime card says you need to get the candles out. Yeah, maybe we need to do like a some kind of ceremony of moon viewing. Alright, we need to leave a space here because we're missing the Dark Rye Prism Star, I'm pretty sure. Repo Man 360 says if you do pull it and it's scuffed, do you keep going? Um, no, I don't think so. I think we just gotta call it at that point. I might replace it if it's scuffed up, like if it's really bad. Um, if it's off center, I'll probably I'll probably trade it. Which is kinda sad because it would be nice to have the one that I actually pulled. Um, so, I don't, hopefully it's just in good shape. That's all we want. It doesn't need to be a, a, a black label, um, but, uh, it would, uh, yeah, it would suck. If it was, if it was, like, mega off-center, I would probably, like, end up trading or selling it and, and buy, buy a replacement, but we're gonna hope that doesn't happen. If you send it to the Pokemon Company, uh, because it's damaged, there's a very good chance that, uh, you're not you're not getting a replacement. They're just gonna like send you a check or a PayPal transaction for six hundred bucks. Xander TCG says you're my favorite YouTuber. Thank you very much. That is a that's an honor. There's a lot of YouTubers, so for me to be your favorite, that's that's wild. Jumbo Fitz says it's in the first 69 packs tomorrow. Layton25 says Pokemon Company actually takes cards back. Uh, yes. So if you end up getting a box and there's damaged cards in it, or if there's like a chase card in it uh, that is damaged, you can send them back. I do have a video on it uh, with instructions on how to do so. Um, and uh, they'll, they'll, they say that they'll replace it. Um, sometimes they'll send you like product and, and stuff like that, but it seems like they're moving more towards like a, a payout program where they'll like you send the card into them uh, and they'll give you kind of like the value of the card. That system is kind of busted at the moment and very delayed and it's gotten to the point that you just basically have to like keep bothering them about it until they until they actually uh, offer to pay you. Uh, and recently instead of because it was like it was like three or four months that uh, they were supposed to send me, a check in the mail to replace like I had I don't know how many reverses from Chilling Rain and Battle Styles and I just sent them a message and I was just like, hey, like I'm trying to open these sets to like complete the sets, but every reverse that I'm getting is like beat dead at hell. Like it looks like graph paper. It's got like scratches, vertical, horizontal. I could play tic tac toe on this thing. Um, some of them were like actual scratches, like they were rubbed on the floor or something. So they sent me. Uh, it was like a it was like a few hundred bucks Canadian. Uh, for like a, I don't know, it was a stack of maybe a couple hundred, hundred, two hundred uh, reverses that were just garbage, basically. Um, do, do, Torsten says, can you do a video on how to send things back to Pokemon when you open damaged product? Yes, I do have that video. It might be a little bit outdated at this point in terms of like uh, the video quality, uh, but all the instructions should all still be the same, so... Other than the fact that you gotta be, uh, currently you gotta be very patient. Uh, it, it also can't be like something, like, it can't be something really minor or they're just gonna tell you to go kick rocks. Um, I sent in, uh, I had my second alt art Charizard from Brilliant. Uh, they still haven't told me how much they were gonna give me or what's going on with that, so I need to reach back out to them about that. Uh, but the back of it looked like it was run over by like a shopping cart or something like that, which sucks really bad. Because uh, it would have been nice to sell the second copy or trade the second copy for something that I actually need. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Just, you gotta keep at them. Basically, the only thing that is needs to be added to that video uh, is the fact that uh, that you have to bother them more than you used to. And that they send you money now instead of uh, replacement product. I don't know what I was sending before, but I had some stuff that was uh, that was beat up. And again, it's got to be like f to the point that like it's just y you wouldn't be able to play a game with it because it's so uh, either scratched or beat or bent or. 
You also got to be careful that you're not like sending in like some really cool error card or something like that. Or that you could potentially you know, sell to some error collector that, uh, that would pay more than what the card is actually worth. Repo Man 360 says that's good to know. I've seen, I've seen some jacked up ETB promos. Yeah. I mean, you got to make it worth too because you have to send the cards into them. Uh, so if it's just like if it's one reverse that's like jacked up, you're probably not going to bother to do it. Uh, but if the value of the the total value of whatever amount of cards are messed up, uh, like if it's a chase, if it's an alt art or something like that, then uh, definitely definitely a good idea to. Uh, To send it in. It could be a very long time before you see any money for it or a replacement or whatever they do for you uh, by that time, but um, you might as well, right? They'll tell you before you send it in if it like qualifies as, uh, as messed up enough. If it's just like slightly off center or something like that, they're they're definitely not gonna take it. Opened Mango says, when is the next PTCGL video? I missed those. Um, if we do that, I should probably turn it into like a live stream thing. Um they don't get very many views, but if maybe people will like it more if we're actually in a live stream, uh, maybe people in the chat we can actually play against them would be kind of fun. Um, although I'm sure like everyone and their dog is gonna play a mill tank deck, so we'll have to adapt for that uh, if that becomes a thing. Uh, but maybe something more interactive uh, will will get more more eyes on it, and then we can also kind of have a chat similar to what we're doing now. Uh, <laughs> Ultra says he's gonna ban anyone that plays uh, mill tanks. There, I've, we we gotta be able to play against the mill tanks. We'll play against the the hardest of hard decks. We'll get hard counters. <laughs> Mac the hypnotist says mill tanks. I don't know anything about them. So yeah, we'll maybe we'll we'll try that out. I'm not sure when. Um, exactly, but uh, we'll see. I'm also trying to uh, to figure out um. In terms of scheduling, it's tough. It's kind of nice to do the Monday and Tuesday stream. Uh, and we're going to continue to do it. But it also sucks when uh, there's something that I want to put a video out right away. Um, but then I also don't want to make more videos later on in the week. So, well, I'm playing around with that. We're, the streaming is definitely going to stick around uh, the, the Monday, Tuesday. Quackfam says the PS5 decks. Oh god, not the PS5s. Serge says he loves the Prism cards. How's it going, Serge? Yeah, the Prism Prism stars are, are pretty cool. Um, they're also kind of hard to. You gotta be careful with these. They they scratch. The foil on the uh, the Prism portion can definitely get scratched up. How close are we to the end of this binder? We're getting there. We're in the steel type. Maybe we'll finish this off uh, before we end the stream. And I will be back tomorrow for the moon hunt. Moon hunt number seven. Xander says I have one prism card. Which one is it? There's some, I don't know which one is even my favorite. The Ditto Prism Star is probably my favorite. That thing was awesome. So essentially you can use it as any basic Pokemon. Um, so if you wanted to evolve into something, um, you can you can use the Ditto as sort of like a fifth copy of, of your basic Pokemon. Search says, I'm good eating a burger until I have to leave to work in 30 minutes. The old pre-work burger, I like it. Ultra says, roughly how many prisms are there? That's a good question. Maybe a dozen? If I had to guess? Let's guess. I can't remember off the top of my head. 
Quark says 34. There's no way there's 34. No, no chance. Is there? Is there actually? I think you're pulling our legs. I can't remember 34 of them. All right, chat. I need you guys to look up how many prism stars there are. To make sure that uh, I'm not getting trolled by Quack Fam here. Quack is gonna list them for us. There's Ditto. There's Darkrai. There's Solgaleo. There must be a Lunala as well. I guess there's trainers too, right? Budget card break says, "Is this base set Shadowless First Edition?" Uh, no. This is uh, this is Ultra Prism. Close though. <laughs> we do, I do have the uh, Shadowless First Edition base. Um. It's always weird to, to say, like, Shadowless when you're talking about 1st Edition base, because all of 1st Edition base is Shadowless, so it's a little bit redundant. The Shadowless part is more like, um, in reference to the fact that there's there's a, a Shadowless print that is essentially the 1st Edition print that doesn't have the stamps on them. <laughs> Upgrade says... Ah, uh, the good old days when 360 slots were enough for every single version in the set? Yeah, exactly. Back when you could uh, probably open the full set in three cases. I think we're getting... We're, it looks like we're getting back to that, but it wouldn't surprise me uh, if uh, if later on we end up like going ham again. Quack, there's, there's no way there's 34. Paul Canyon? Are we still in... Are we still in... Are we going by set? Diancy? Yeah, there's definitely a Diancy and a Volcanion. Super boost energy. That was a good one. <laughs> Jedi Master Josh says he's listed. Yeah, but he's only listed nine. We're still a long ways off for 34. Josh would know. He's just going to start making up stuff at the end for the number 33 and 34. Jake says, guess the weight of your entire collection. Um, Probably could, actually. We take 20,000 cards... Uh, the, and, and multiply that by the weight of a card, or if we divide it by 10, essentially, so that we, uh, we have it in pack form, and then we have probably a hundred binders, ish, it's heavy. Beast Energy, Latias, Latios. Victini, all right. Uh, are we gonna go through like how playable each and every one of them are? Thank Thanks for the membership. Welcome to the Cool Kid Club. Ormidier became a member. Ormidier? Thank you. Chad Fleming became a member. Chad? Ricky Losh became a member. Was was Heat Factory and Prism Star? First Tomu became a member.
Maggie Moo became a member. Miles Dong became a member. We're missing the licky tongue reverse. How's that happen? Camas became a member. Ryan Alter Matt became a member. Poke Serg became a member. I'm no surge left. Did we get through them all here? We did. Alright. Get another tune here. Black Market. Alex says, text to speech killing me? In a good way? Or a bad way? Killing you like with laughter? Yeah, we're two hours in. We're uh, we gotta finish this binder though, right, guys? You guys want to see the the back end of it? You know what I mean? Wondrous labyrinth. All right. So I definitely underestimated how many <laughs> prism star cards there are. I thought there were way less for some reason. We're missing an EV reverse. You were off? Is there only 26? How many? What's the actual number? 40, says Xander. More than 12? Yeah, it's definitely more than 12. I was kind of forgetting all the, uh, all the trainer cards that were Prism Stars. 26. Yeah, 26 makes more sense. Trainer, Prism Star. Yeah, there's uh, some of the trainer cards. Uh, some of the ones that he mentioned up above, like Black Market, uh, Wondrous Labyrinth. Those are like stadium cards. Uh, then like the Lusamine, etc. Cyrus. Cyrus Prism. They're like a... Um, for anyone that doesn't know, the, the, the Prism Star cards are like a... They're kind of like an an overpowered. Um, well, most of them. The, the idea is that they're an overpowered card, but you're only allowed to play one in your deck, uh, instead of the four that you can usually play of a of a card. Old school radiance, yeah, pretty much. I gotta pay attention here because I'm missing some of the reverses, and if I Oopsie doopsie. Then we're in trouble. Alex says, I lol, I recently got rid of two of those ones that you needed, shame. Um, it's possible that I have them. I still haven't uh Quokfam sent me uh, a box with a bunch of the uh bunch of the cards that I was missing, so I think I think there might have been some of them in there. So there is that, but we'll we'll get to those eventually. Um, we were just looking to to fill in the remainder of the time. It was driving me nuts that this uh, uh, Ultra Prism uh, set was partially transferred over into the new binder. Quackfam says there's 27. I think I've double numbered one of the prisms. Okay, cool. Now I know. Just in case I'm at a uh, Pokemon trivia event, and they ask me how many prism stars there are. Andy says, if you have 20,000 cards, your collection weighs about 39.714 kilograms. How many pounds is that? Alex says, how many binders do you own and how many of them are filled? Binders full of waifus over binder full, binders full of women. What? Um, I have uh, essentially a binder for each, each set. Uh, some of the smaller sets... 
uh, end up being placed in like the binder with the uh, with the promos for that era. But uh, but yeah. All right, I think we didn't mess anything up here. Hopefully, we got the uh, fan Rotom reverse. Twenty something pounds. Yeah, it's 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 heavy. There's a lot. Even lifting like twenty thousand cards uh, would be uh, quite the quite the feat. I think there's like 3,200 uh, in a BCW four row, so six of those essentially. It's a it's a lot of it's a lot of cards, a lot of weight. At Worlds 2023, they should have a bulk card deadlift competition, says Alex. Yeah, you <laughs> lift as many booster boxes as you can in order to get them for free. Ooh, Linden says, super intrigued to see your binder storage when it's ready to show off. It is, I mean, it's kind of, uh, I don't know if I have one handy, but the, the binders right now, um, at least the, the nine slot ones, I just put them in like FedEx boxes. Like the express boxes uh, to keep the dust, dust and dirt off of them. Uh, but uh, well, I got I got something in the works that's gonna look pretty sick, nasty, uh, and uh, I think it's gonna be kind of a a must for anyone that's collecting uh, binder sets. Even if you don't collect every set, uh, I think this is gonna be a, an option op an an awesome option. It sounds like everyone in chat is down for it. The, oh, you, it'd be like a one of those shopping sprees where you can, uh, you can go in and you can everything that you can hold is free, except it's how many booster boxes can you lift? Sandra says, "What's the best Pokemon video game in your opinion?" That's that's a hard one. Um, I mean, the modern ones are really awesome. I'm, I'm much, a much bigger fan of like playing an actual like console rather than a handheld. I know the Switch is like, uh, kind of both, but, uh, I'd much rather play like on a TV. Um, so I don't know, like Scarlet and Violet was very fun. Um, it sucks that it had flaws, but it was also a it was also a fun experience, even though it was it's pretty janky for what it is. One fifteen. We got the Silvalli. I remember when I uh, when I first. Got, I guess it wasn't when I first. Before I ever heard uh, Silvalli's name, I used to call it Silvalli, and a little kid like corrected me on it. He's like, "No, you're dumb." The uh, Silv it's Silvalli. Until that, I I learned my lesson. I now say it properly. JT Pokemon says, "Yay, Embryon Hunt live stream number 19." No, it's not. It will not go to 19. Seven tomorrow. I hope it never goes to that that far. Guys, please hope for the same. I know we have fun with those. We can open something else. Doesn't have to be. Doesn't have to be evolving skies. Alex says, "LOL, kid owned ya." Yeah, he, de he definitely did. 
Um, did I have another? I need another. I have a sleeve. Yeah, the sleeves alone. I try not to think about it, but the total like cost of the sleeves that are around the twenty thousand cards is uh probably pretty ridiculous if you kind of just purchase them all at once. Jake says the pronunciation of these in the Scarlet Violet set will make anyone laugh. Yeah, there's probably some of them that I'm saying wrong. I mean, I guess time will tell. Uh, there's no, like, audio in the games or anything that say how to pronounce the names, so... Until the anime comes out, I probably won't know what I'm doing. Quack says the longer the hunt goes, the more friends we pick up along the journey. That that is true. That is that is the upside. There is an upside. Um, plus, the last couple streams we got three cards that we needed each time uh, for the master set. So. Fitz is asking if I teach Pokephonics. Um, no, do not. But maybe someday there will be a course on that. I don't think I'll be the professor necessarily for it, but... Cheeseburger says, do you have almost every USA Pokemon card rattle? Um, no. I have the majority of them. Um, but I don't have almost every, I wouldn't say. So as mentioning earlier, um, I'm, I must be over 20,000 unique cards at this point, uh, and 8,000 something missing. So I have at least what's shown on screen. Um, people are often, oh, I guess they don't really anymore. People usually would ask me like, hey, why don't you collect the Japanese cards? This is, this is already enough, guys. There's already like 30,000 plus English cards to collect. We don't need to make that any harder. Yeah. Cheeseburger says, I can only imagine how much room that takes up. Um, It's not that bad actually because it's in binders. If it was graded cards and it was 20,000 cards, that would uh, that'd be its own room probably. But uh, yeah, not, not bad. It's in binders. I mean, if your binders hold 360 cards, they're not all full because I usually have a different binder for each set, but here's the Cyrus Prism Star for anyone wondering. <laughs> Mario says, we don't have to make this harder, yet refuses to buy the Umbreon. True. Um. <laughs> Shadowless Altart in the chat. How's it going? Uh, for anyone wondering, the uh, the rattle in the top middle uh, was made by Shadowless Altart, who's in the chat here now. Hmm. Alex asks, "What's your favorite Mawile art?" That I don't know for sure. There's a lot of really good ones. I don't know if there's any that I really dislike. I'm kind of upset that the trainer gallery was uh, was uh, with Bead or or uh, Bay Day, just because I don't really like the character. So would have uh, would have been better with a different character. I think it's still a beautiful card, but. Dope's doing some math on the booster boxes. 
the evolving skies. They weren't from booster boxes. I mean, early on, some of them were from booster boxes. We had like a ripple in the sleeve. I'm just gonna not use that one. Hopefully the other ones are fine. Yeah. It's weird. Uh, the, the recent Evolving Skies packs haven't been from booster boxes. Uh, the boost, booster boxes themselves have way too much of a premium to, to justify opening those. Ariel says Evo Skies was cheap early 2022. Yeah, when it came out, it was it wasn't expensive, but even the like mini reprint or whatever was kind of gobbled up and didn't really bring the price down to where it was when it came out. So we got a fire memory. Fitz says, favorite mobile art is the one Arita made for you. Uh, yeah, the sign cards are really, really cool. Um, those are kind of a whole separate thing, I think. If I'm picking just... It's hard to pick my favorite. There's, there's, there's a lot of good ones. It's lucky enough to get all three of the uh, Arita artworks signed by Arita. Put them in my mobile binder. Shadowless Alt Altar says, how many alts are you going to pull for me tomorrow, Rattle? Um, I've definitely been pulling more alt arts for other people than I have for myself. So at least I'm helping some people uh, com complete their sets. Uh, which, ones are you, which ones are you still missing? I'll see what I can do. But most importantly, we got to pull that Moonbrew out. JT says, when you pull the Umbreon, you better <laughs> pretend to be as hyped as Poker Rep. <laughs> Man, I don't know if I can, uh, if I can do that. Mm. It is gonna, it is gonna be extra satisfying, though. I will say. It'd be nice to get that out of the way. We're, we're just, we're looking, we're collecting accolades, achievements. Uh, for the uh, ridiculous stuff that we're doing here with the openings, which is fun. We got a little little side quest, if you want to call it that. Quagfam says dibs on miscuts. I think that's probably fair. Hopefully, man, if that Moonbrion is miscut, I'm going to be so sad. Um, not because it's, it'll probably be worth more money if it's a miscut, um, but the fact that, like, I just want I want the Moonbrion to be decent centered, not damaged out of the pack. Um, please and thank you, Pokemon Company. Mostly just because I want the the one that I pulled uh, to be the one in the binder. But if it's miscut or damaged or whatever, then JT says dibs on any Gyarados or Arceus cards. There are definitely some Gyarados in there. Open Mango says, what's your favorite set, Rattle? Um, I don't know. All the, uh, all the trainer gallery sets are really awesome. Um, modern, favorite modern set was... Uh, was definitely Cosmic Eclipse until we started getting those Trainer Gallery sets. But I think those, like, collectively kind of... are better. My favorite specialty set is definitely Crown Zenith. Um, favorite vintage set? Like, the first thing that I went back and uh, and put together was, was Gym Challenge. I don't know. I like the Gym ones where it's, like, 
it's like so and so's Pokemon. I think it's like it's a crime that we didn't get the uh, Versus series in English because those are sick. Missing Clover. All right, we need uh, we're we're missing the reverse missing Clover. That's a thing. Jumbo fits with the frog. Frog emoji. Jared says, would you be into opening Shining Fates for a master set after Umbreon? Um, I would, other than the fact that uh that I have the I have the I have the master set already. I did end up buying a lot of the the baby shinies uh, once they became like really cheap, and they got like they were crazy cheap. And that that set is that is one of those sets that is basically impossible to open and complete by pulling everything. Alex says he did get a lot of hollow shift V's. Yeah, I definitely did. Had a ton of those. Um, basically every Pokemon, I think, which is pretty well. Well, every V, every V Pokemon. Yeah. So yeah, Jake's Jake's. Jake asks, did you find any extreme error cards in your Evolving Skies openings? And, uh, yeah, as, as mentioned, a ton of the, uh, Hollow Shift Vs. Um, the, the miscut Glaceon on the bench. Man, we still need the friggin' Tree Quaza, too. That doesn't want to show up, either. Evolving Skies, I'm pretty sure, just hates me. I don't know what it is. What I did to the Eeveelutions for them to... For them to lash out that way. Jake says, My buddy got a half Glaceon, half Ray Ray alt. That is... It's pretty sick. We were looking up to see what was, uh, um, it, the card wasn't showing, uh, the actual, like, part of the card that you can identify, uh, but on the Glaceon, it would have been the, uh, the Umbreon VMAX, like, the plain VMAX that's next to the, the Glaceon alt on the sheet, based on somebody else that has one that's very super mega cut to the side. Yeah, if I can pull both the, uh, Moonbreon and Treequaza tomorrow, that would be... That would be ideal. Get those bad boys out of the way. Watch, well, I'm gonna have like leftover packs after I pull the, the Moobreon and I'll end up selling those and the leftover packs will end up having another Moobreon in it. Just, just the way that it works. Just to spite me, it's gonna be like, Another Moonbreon or two just sitting in the other packs. Saladin says, I pulled the Treequaza. That's lucky. I wish I wish I had a Treequaza. Layton25 says, how many packs of Evolving Skies do you have? I, I have enough for this week. I don't have enough for the week after. Quark says, didn't I send you the reverse missing clover and looker? Um yes, probably. I haven't uh I haven't checked them off yet. But uh that'll be a that'll be a separate event putting those bad boys in in the binders. We need to get them transferred over and then we'll do like uh kind of a similar thing where I, I have a bunch of binders and then we fill in like sp specific cards that are missing. I didn't forget about them. And yes, you, you're not losing your mind. You probably did. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Unit energy. All those good old unit energies. 
Gotta like them. JT Pokemon says I was sent a PSA 9 Moonbeam for free as a very kind gift. Kind of want to send it in for a regrade. Yeah, if you think it's uh, if you think it's worthy of one, I mean, if it's even if it's even close to looking like a ten, it'll probably get a ten eventually. Had Quack Fam, who was way too generous, saying that he would send me a Moonbrion. but we can't do that. We get to pull one. All right, we're getting into the juicy stuff here soon, guys. This is always the lead up beforehand. One thirty-eight. Leafy on on this page. See, like this feels like it doesn't fit because we we like we didn't end on the end of the page. Leafy on. One forty-nine. Then we get us. One thirty-nine. We gotta be careful here, although less careful. Because uh, at least we don't have to move everything in the binder if we mess up on the last pages here. We got the Glaceon, which was, what was it, one, 141, 142. The Zerka Tree, everyone's favorite Pokemon. I know you guys love Ultra Beasts. Speaking of Ultra, I'm saying Ultra too many times in the Ultra chat. Forty three, forty four, forty five. Forty five. So we're definitely I'm definitely missing some full arts here. Forty five, forty six, forty seven. We got 47, 48, 49 with the Gardenia. Sun and Moon Full Air Trainers are pretty sick. We'll say. Mario says, do you only use the 12 page binders if the set doesn't fit in a standard nine? Yeah, pretty much. So all the old, most of my older sets um, they're all in the, the nine slot binders. This one, the Lusamine. Love this card. Crazy. Tentacle. Lusamine. 153. 50, 51, 52, 53. In the middle here. Four, fifty-five, fifty-six, fifty-seven. 55, 56, 57. We got the Leafeon Hyper Rare. We got Ferramosa, which is 58. Oh, I do have some cards set aside for this too, so maybe we'll we'll save those for next time. Should have been paying attention. I think I have a bunch of the. Uh... We have some that Quack Fam sent me that I was missing, and then also I had some set aside that I purchased. But for today, we're just trying to get it out of the ring binder into the uh, into the the good binder. 61, 62, 63. We got the uh, Necrozma. Duskmane. 
Dusk, Dusk Man Edition. We got the Dialga. And then we have a Peking card. Alright, Peking card. Number 169. 65, 66, 67, 68, 69. Yeah, I definitely have more of these that I purchased, but we'll have to find those for a future stream. Slap them in there. Uh, the uh, variants. We'll look through the variants. I'll stick those into the uh, the binder off stream. Uh, so we have like the back when the pre-release promo was that pre? No, that wasn't pre-release promo. Um, those were SM promos. I don't know what this was from. We got Toys R Us Piplup. Show you guys the cards. Uh, I'll see if I can find some sort of order to put these in. And um, then we have the uh, the gold uh, versions of these, uh, which I definitely I know it's it's from the the Hidden Fates product, uh, but they go in here because they're they're Ultra Prism. So somebody was asking earlier. Uh, this is uh, where these bad boys go because they're Ultra Prism logo. Do I have stuff on the back page? I don't. That's it. That's all. Um, we'll call it a stream there, guys. Hope to see you all tomorrow. Love you very much. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to pull that Moonberry on tomorrow. Promise. Promise. <laughs>